detail. Fruit flies have hundreds of lenses per eye. Bees boast an astonishing 7,000 lenses. But evolution drove one insect to develop a compound eye of staggering complexity, the dragonfly. Each eye has a mind-boggling 29,000 lenses, making for the ultimate motion detector. In pursuit of fast-moving prey, dragonflies give chase at a staggering 38 miles per hour. Their eye's focusing power is poor, but their processing speed is spectacular, resolving images five times faster than our own. The result? Lightning reflexes, ideal for timing strikes and avoiding high-speed collisions. The success of insects has made the compound eye the most prevalent in all of nature. But it would not be the only vision system to emerge from the Cambrian explosion. Another group of animals evolved. One that would launch the prototype for an advanced eye of their own. The vertebrates. The eyes of insects and the eyes of vertebrates represent different instances of the origin of eyes. They've evolved from different ancestors to achieve the same end. The vertebrate eye gets its start as a simple light detector. Over time, it will evolve and become the targeting system for history's largest predators. When we look at Earth's creatures, we find that many of them look back with an eye akin to our own. In fact, one type of eye powers the vision of all vertebrates, animals with a backbone. A single lensed camera made of soft tissue, known as the vertebrate eye. The vertebrate line includes reptiles, mammals, and birds. And they all have a common ancestor, a primitive worm-like animal that lived during the time of the Cambrian explosion. How this creature's crude eyes developed into the intricate organs we see with today has fascinated scientists since Darwin. The vertebrate eye is really an icon of evolution. Early detractors of Darwin used it as an example of a feature that is so unbelievably complicated and uh, it's so obviously a machine and there's so obviously the mark of an intelligent designer there. Darwin's famous response was to go through a series of intermediate evolutionary steps and show how you could start with a cluster of photosensitive cells on the surface of the skin. From there, you could create a pit eye, which essentially putting those photosensitive cells at the bottom of a pit creates the first directional sensitivity. And from there, you could evolve other sorts of focusing or accommodating parts of the eye and essentially show that it was plausible that you could have a whole series of steps that lead up to a complex camera eye. This new eye would sweep through the ocean, providing an advanced weapon in the escalating battle between predators and their prey. The genes for building the eye were passed down to all the branches of the vertebrate tree, from the first fish to sharks and on to shallow water swimmers who would boldly set their sights on an unexploited world, land, a new arena that one group of predators would come to dominate. These creatures, carnivorous dinosaurs, first evolved 230 million years ago. For the next 160 million years, they would rule the animal kingdom, littering the fossil record with the bones of their vanquished prey. What was it that made carnivorous dinosaurs such successful predators? Was it their size, their speed, their array of vicious weapons? Such traits are the stuff of any mega predator but they're useless without another key skill, the ability to target prey. Carnivorous dinosaurs surely possess some of the largest eyes in history. 
But how might their vision have helped them become such extraordinary predators? Paleontologist Kent Stevens made it his mission to find out. Very interesting to know what it was like to be a dinosaur. What kind of vision did it have? How did it use its eyes? Stevens faced a major obstacle. Unlike their bones, the eyes of dinosaurs have not stood the test of time. It's essential to, to fill in the missing pieces because the soft tissue of the eyeball, of course, never is preserved. What you mostly have is just the bone. Stevens used the bones to make scale models of dinosaur heads. These models would serve as a window into dinosaur vision. What I came up with is a way to estimate how well the dinosaur could look out into the world by my looking at the animal. Stevens devised a novel way to make his dinosaurs see. Lasers. The beam lit up the eye, allowing Stevens to plot its line of sight. When the illuminated eye became obscured by the creature's brow or snout, Stevens had reached the limit of what that eye could see. I decided I will trace those lines of sight on an intervening glass between me and the animal, where if I couldn't see it, it couldn't see me. By mapping the lines of sight of both eyes, Stevens could calculate their degree of overlap. When I have these dots now, if I connect them, this actually represents the region which both eyes could see. The area where Stevens' markings overlap is known as the binocular field of vision. What advantage does binocular vision provide? Binocular vision, seeing something with two eyes, is uh, very good for making fine depth judgments. If you have two eyes and you can simultaneously focus on an object in space in front of you, your brain can do a little bit of trig and decide how, exactly how far away that object is. How would this aid a predator? Imagine a large dinosaur whose two eyes face to the side, resulting in two fields of view that don't overlap. This makes it difficult for the creature to see an object as distinct from its background and to gauge the distance to it. But if its eyes face more forward, their fields overlap, providing a degree of binocular vision. Suddenly, it's a 3D world. Engaging distance to a target is no longer a problem. Stevens knew if he could work out the binocular vision of carnivorous dinosaurs, he could determine how they hunted their prey. He trained his sights on the most iconic member of their group, Tyrannosaurus rex. With 13-inch canines, this six-ton beast was certainly armed to the teeth. But did T-Rex have the targeting system to back up its bite? T-Rex had 55 degrees, which is very substantial binocular overlap, as much as hawks. Stevens concluded that this vision system allowed T-Rex to target its prey at a distance and pursue it on the run. That certainly would have selective advantage toward being a better predator. You can just stay locked onto your target, and the amount of overlap could allow you to see how the world is moving as, as you're moving forward. 3D vision was a vital part of T-Rex's arsenal. And looking at skulls from different points in the animal's history, Stevens found it evolved even better 3D vision over time. Its snout narrowed, and its cheeks hollowed out to allow for increasingly forward-facing eyes. These animals reshaped their heads evolutionarily for a purpose. You see the steady progression toward more and more binocular vision, so it must have been of advantage to the animal. With forward-facing, four-inch diameter eyes, T-Rex's vision likely ranked among the most detailed in the animal kingdom. But as Stevens discovered, not all carnivorous dinosaurs could hope to follow T-Rex's lead. This is Allosaurus. Uh, he was the top predator in the late Jurassic. This animal has very lateral-facing eyes. 
And not only that, but there's a whole structure here along the top of the snout of this animal, which completely obliterates the view from the left eye to the animal's right and vice versa. So this animal has essentially blinders on it that keep it from being able to have a very wide field of view. Allosaurus turns out to have about 20 degrees of binocular overlap. How could a dinosaur saddled with blinders be a top dog of the Jurassic? It turns out less binocular vision led Allosaurus to assume a craftier mode of predation. Modern predators that have so little overlap between the two eyes, you tend to find that they are ambush predators, like a modern crocodile. One of the important aspects of an ambush predator is to be able to have surveillance and awareness of what's going on around it. So the idea of lateral facing eyes is completely consistent with a, an ambush predator. They basically wait until the meal comes to them. They have a task of judging whether the time is right to lunge and try to take out the prey. Dinosaurs show how the same winning strategy evolves again and again in predator vision. The opposite strategy holds true for prey animals. Their vision has evolved to help them escape their killers. As predators evolved eyes closer and closer together for targeting, the eyes of their prey moved further and further apart. Today, rabbits take this strategy to the extreme. 360 degree vision. Rabbit eyes evolved to sit high into the sides of its skull. While its vision is not three dimensional, it allows the rabbit to see any threat at any angle. Rabbits, like humans, are mammals. And back when dinosaurs still ruled the earth, our mammal ancestors had to do much more than keep an eye out. To survive, they had to find a new niche in vision, one that would allow them to coexist with creatures threatening their existence. One hundred million years ago, dinosaurs rule the Earth. The odds are stacked against any animal competing with these mega predators, especially for the evolutionary newcomers, the world's first mammals, pint-sized animals not much larger than mice. When the dinosaurs were running around, there were also mammals. But the only mammals that were around were very small, they'd fit in the palm of your hand, and they were just trying to keep out of the way of the dinosaurs. For mammals, the era's underdogs, it was either scurry or be squashed. These tiny creatures adapted to an unexploited niche, the nighttime, and evolved a vision system that could thrive in the dark night vision, a triumph of eye evolution, and a trait essential for survival in many mammal species today. Many varieties of modern mammals also see well in the dark, and many of them are also nocturnal. And in some cases, at least, this is probably left over from their evolutionary heritage as small mammals uh, hiding in the shadows of dinosaurs, emerging at night, and feeding. What changes did evolution make to the eyes of nocturnal animals? That's a question Chris Kirk is trying to answer. I tell my friends it's one of those things that you would have expected that somebody back in the 18th century went around collecting eyeballs. But to my surprise, when I started looking for data on just the gross anatomy of the eye, there was very little that had been published, and so spent, you know, about a year and a half collecting eyes. Kirk uses his extensive collection of eyeballs to study the mechanics of night vision. By putting his subjects eyeball to eyeball, he's able to compare them and see how their anatomy has evolved to deal with the dark. What's the difference between the eye of a day-active monkey called a marmoset and a night-active fat-tailed dwarf lemur? It's the size of their corneas. The cornea is the window to your eye. It sets the ultimate limit on how much light your eye can gather. 
The cornea is a clear curved shell that provides focusing power and ushers light into the pupil. The light hits the retina, where it is converted into electrical impulses that are funneled through the optic.